Hello everyone and welcome back. This is Mr. Kovalt and in this video we're going to be talking about the structure of the periodic table. So what we need to talk about is this word periodic. So periodic means that there's something that occurs at regular or predict, uh, predictable intervals. So something that repeats over and over again, uh, like for example the, the, the swinging back and forth of a of a pendulum is considered periodic, things like that. So we're gonna look at what is periodic in the periodic table. So when we're talking about periodic law, um, what we mean there is that there are physical and chemical properties of, of the elements in the periodic table that are periodic, meaning there's a repeating pattern. So <clears throat> this repeats by atomic number. Okay, so we're going to see that pattern later on. So the periodic table of elements is arranged by atomic number, and this shows patterns in the properties. Okay, elements. So let's uh, talk a little bit about elements. Let's remind ourselves what an element is. An element is one of those pure substances. Remember, there's two categories of pure substances. There's elements, pure, there's elements, and then there's also compounds. <clears throat> so elements is one of those categories of pure substances. Um, there's only one kind of atom, so you, you, as long as you have only one kind of atom, you've got an element. It can be bonded together in, in a molecule, like O2 and H2, or P4, or S8. Um, so even though they are bonded together in a molecule, it's still one kind of atom bonded together, and so it's a pure substance and an element. Okay, so these cannot be broken down into simpler substances uh, because you only got that one kind of atom. To break it down further would be basically to destroy the atom and not have an element anymore. So 90 of the elements occur naturally on Earth. So the first 90 are going to be naturally occurring. And then 25 of these were synthesized or made by scientists in the lab. So you, you make these kind of like in the super collider, uh, the Hadron Collider uh, will, are, is a place where these elements can be synthesized. Okay, let's talk about the periodic table and the first name that you should know is Dmitry Mendeleev. So Dmitry Mendeleev it was a Russian scientist. So he was around in the 1860s uh, and he grouped the elements according to atomic masses and properties. So he took the information that was that was gathered by other scientists, he kind of put it together and he decided to kind of organize and group elements according to their properties and then ordered his table according to atomic masses. So everything was kind of ordered according to the mass of the elements. Today, the periodic table is ordered by atomic number, but he, he ordered it by atomic mass. So, uh, so then uh, he created his own periodic table and this is the periodic table that he originally set up. So um, you could see that it is in German. Um, and so you could see here that the elements here are ordered. You have sodium here, you have lithium, sodium, beryllium, boron carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine. So it's kind of, you got hydrogen and lithium here, but you got beryllium in this grouping here. And then you got magnesium. So his groupings are kind of across. So beryllium, magnesium. Um, so it's kind of hard to see a little bit uh, of what his table was doing. Uh, but you will notice uh, that there are these question marks in the table. They're like gaps or holes in his table. So why do you think these question marks 
are here. So Mendeleev's uh, table allowed him to make predictions. So those holes in the table had to be filled. So Mendeleev, uh, based on the pattern of his periodic table and what he saw, the way he arranged it, he said that those holes should be filled. So there should be some elements out there that are missing that we need to discover. They're waiting to be discovered. So Mendeleev's table uh, had those gaps, but he was able to predict the characteristics of these missing elements based on the periodicity or the periodic law that he noticed in the table. So for example, on the left-hand side is his predicted element called Eka silicon. And so he predicted that the um, atomic mass would be 72, the density would be 5.5 grams per centimeter cubed, the bonding power would be four, right? And then what he means by the bonding power is basically how many, how many bonds can this element make? And he predicted the color would be dark gray. And so all of this was based on the surrounding elements in the periodic table and the pattern that he saw. And so he had predicted this element in 1871. And then in 1886, not long after, about 15 years later, the uh, element germanium was discovered. And so it was discovered to have an atomic mass of 72.6, a uh, density of 5.47 grams per centimeter cubed, which is basically really close to what he had predicted. It has a bonding power of four. It can, it can make four bonds and it's a grayish white color. So notice here how Mendeleev's prediction uh, or predictions were very accurate when compared to Germanian's actual characteristics. That's amazing. So he was able to predict uh, these properties of a missing element based on the periodicity and the patterns in the periodic table. So then now comes along Henry Moseley. And Henry Moseley in 1914 rearranged the elements in the periodic table according to atomic numbers instead of atomic masses. And so here uh, he determined that the number of protons is equal to what is called the atomic number. And so this uh, allows us to have the periodic table that we have today. And so now we see that there are um, groupings here. So if we, using this as a guide, uh, we could color code um, your periodic table to show the three classes. So uh, there's this highlighted zigzag normally in the periodic table that's in yellow. And so that usually is uh, key for dividing the periodic table into two parts. There's actually three major parts or classes of elements that we see here. Uh, there's this part on the right, I'm sorry, on the left, the biggest part of the table is on the left of this stairway, this yellow highlighted stairway. And then you got the reddish part on the right, that's the second part. And then you got this green part that's on the stairway itself. And so those are the three parts, and we're gonna talk about those three parts in a moment. Okay, so here are the classes. So the metals are the light blue. So everything that is light blue are metals. And you can see right away that metals uh, occupy the largest part of the periodic table, about two thirds of it, it, it seems, or three fourths. And then you have the non-metals. The non-metals are in the red. So they're to the right of this stairway and the, the metals are to the left. And then you got what are called the metalloids, which are the green elements. And the metalloid kind of sounds like something, um, like if you know what a humanoid is, that's something that's human-like, right? Maybe not quite human, but it's got human characteristics. 
and maybe it's got characteristics of other other things, right? So uh, a metalloid is something that's metal-like. It's got characteristics of metals, but it also has characteristics of non-metals too. So they're in the middle on this stairway. And so let's talk about metals. So metals, they're on the left of that zigzag line, that stairway on the periodic table. Uh, and, ex and, and hydrogen is an exception. A hydrogen is obviously a gas. It's not a metal. And uh, some chemical properties of metals is that they have few uh, valence electrons. So they're all the way to the uh, left of the periodic table. So if we're looking at valence electrons, you know, those groups 1a and 2a and 3a, they, those have like three valence electrons up to uh, most, one, two, and three valence electrons. So not a lot of valence electrons for the metals. Uh, they lose electrons easily, right? They want to be like a noble gas. And so since they have only a few valence electrons, it's easy just to lose those three, uh, those valence electrons to become like a noble gas. And therefore they will have a positive charge and that makes them cations. Some physical properties is that they're malleable. Malleable means you can beat it and pound it into shape, right? Ductile means that you can draw it into wires. You can pull it so that it thins out into wires. They're good conductors. They're shiny and they are solid at room temperature. So can you guess what uh, metal is not a solid at room temperature? If you guessed mercury, you would be right. Okay, so atoms with few electrons in their outer energy level, these are metals. So you can see that in the outermost energy level of beryllium, you only have two valence electrons. For sodium, you only have one. So notice that there's only two in this one and there's only one electron in the outer one. So losing those electrons is no big deal for these, these atoms. They want to lose those electrons so they could be like a noble gas. So what about no, uh, non-metals? Uh, so they're to the right of this zigzag line, that highlighted stairway that I pointed to you earlier. So some chemical properties. These are pretty much the opposite of metal properties. So if you can remember what the metal, metallic properties are, or the properties of metals, then you just think the opposite. So they're, uh, instead of being almost empty or have uh, only a few valence electrons, they're almost full, right? So they have a lot of valence electrons. So they're, they're like six, they're like five, six, seven, and eight, right? Um, so they're full or almost full uh, with their uh, valence electrons. They tend to grain, gain electrons. And the reason they gain electrons is because gaining electrons makes them more stable because then they're, they can be like a noble gas. So gaining electrons makes them more like a noble gas instead of losing electrons. Um, and because they're gaining electrons, this gives them a negative charge. So they tend to have negative charges and they make anions. So what are the physical properties? So again, the physical properties are kind of the opposite of metals, right? So metals are ductile and malleable. And uh, nonmetals are not ductile or malleable. They're actually, you know, brittle. Brittle means that they can break off into pieces pretty easily. Um, that you can't really pound them with a the hammer and bend them into shape. Though they're going to crack and break up into pieces. Um, and you're not going to pull them into wires. Uh, they're bad conductors. So metals are good conductors. Nonmetals are very bad conductors. They hardly conduct anything. Um, they're mostly solid. Uh, although there's a lot of gases as well, and uh, maybe a liquid here. And uh, some are, you know, gases at, at room temperature. Okay, so here's some examples. So we have oxygen, fluorine, and helium. These are all on the right side of, the, of that stairway, that highlighted stairway on the periodic table. And you'll notice that, uh, that fluorine has seven... Uh, electrons, seven valence electrons on its outer shell. So it only needs one electron to be like a noble gas. So it's going to pick up that one electron. Helium is a noble gas. It has a full outer shell with two electrons. So that's going to be uh, stable. 
Uh, and also notice oxygen has six valence electrons, so it only needs two more to be stable like a noble gas. So it's going to pick up those electrons pretty easily. And so, as I said, helium is a full outer shell. Oh, yeah, what about the metalloids? They're the green ones that we saw that are smack on the middle. So they're along that stairway. So those metalloids have basically uh, properties of both metals and nonmetals. So they're kind of in the middle as far as their properties go. So they border on that zigzag line. Chemical properties, most have half a full uh, half-life, uh, I'm sorry, have a full valence shell. So they have half full valence shells, most of them do. So they're like in the middle. They don't, they don't have a little bit, they don't have a lot, they're in the middle. And so these guys are going to make anions or cations, depending on their environment, depending on what compound they make. So the physical properties are going to be smack in the middle, right? So they have properties of metals and nonmetals, you know. Um, so they're very good conductors. A lot of uh, the, the metalloids, uh, or what are also called semi-metals, um, are all very... Um, uh, they tend to be the uh, semiconductors, right? So they, uh, they're in the middle as far as conducting. Uh, and uh, there's no way to know which properties of each. So they have, a, they have a lot of different properties, a mixture of properties. So here uh, you'll notice that we have two of these. So you have boron. And you have uh, silicon. So boron has uh, three valence electrons and silicon has four. So the middle is, that's a four is the half of eight. And so these are in the middle. They have pretty much half, half complete outer energy level. So only have three electrons for the outer energy level and for uh, boron and four for silicon. So what are the important features of the periodic table? So first of all, we need to know, we need to, we need to use our terminology properly. And we, we're going to use this very often in science class. In, in uh, chemistry, you got to know the terminology when we're talking about the periodic table. So the first thing you need to know is that the rows are, we don't call them rows, they're called periods. And they're called periods because that's where the the periodic repeating pattern occurs. It's along the row. It's along the period. So as you go from left to right in a period, you'll notice that there are certain, certain patterns that repeat itself when you go from one period to the next. There's this repeating pattern. And so you'll also notice that the, uh, the elements that are put together in these columns, they have similar characteristics. So the similarity of the characteristics as you go across from left to right repeats when you go down to the next uh, period. So when you look at lithium, certain characteristics, beryllium has certain characteristics, boron has certain characteristics, carbon and so on, all the way to neon, which is non-reactive. And then when you follow from neon, which is 10 to sodium, you get the repeating pattern. So Sodium behaves like lithium, magnesium behaves like beryllium, aluminum behaves like boron to some extent, and so on. So you get this repeating pattern. So the rows are called periods. So each horizontal row of elements is on the periodic table. That's called a period. Okay. So left to right. Okay, so we have period one only has two elements in it. Period two has eight elements in it. Period three has eight elements in it. Period four has uh, 18 elements in it. So as we're going down, these are periods. So you can see that the periods are numbered on the side, on the, on the left-hand side here. And so we keep going. So this would be period five, period six. Now this lanthanide series here, the lanthanides, 
actually fits in between uh, the barium and uh, the luthenium here. So here it fits right here in the middle. And then same for period seven. So the actinides, uh, this row here fits in between uh, 89 and, or I'm sorry, 80, 88 and 103. So that's where you're going to fit these in. So these two rows here fits in the periods six and seven. So they're part of that period as well. So how many periods or rows are there on the periodic table of elements? There are seven, seven periods. So periodic properties or period properties. So the seven periods, they're numbered from the top down, numbered from top down. So the first period is on top, second, third, fourth, working your way down as we saw in the previous, previous slide. So atomic numbers and atomic masses increase as you go from left to right in a period. So that's the first thing, masses and atomic numbers increase. Atomic numbers are going to increase uh, because that's the way the table has been set up by Mosley. So Mosley set it up according to atomic numbers. So as you go across the period, atomic numbers are going to increase. As you go numerically through the periodic table from one element to the next, the, the, the atomic numbers are increasing. So um, left to right uh, and mass increases as well. There are some exceptions where the mass decreases when you go from one ele element to the other, but I think there's only those two exceptions. So all the elements in the same period have the same number of energy levels. That's another thing to keep in mind. So the period number matches the number of uh, energy levels that the atoms in that period have. So if you're an element in period four, then you have four energy levels. If you're, uh, if you're an element in period two, then you have two energy levels. So all the elements in a period have the same energy levels and that, and that number of energy levels is indicated by the period number. So period number one equals one energy level, two equals two energy levels, period three has three energy levels, and etc. So the and what we mean by the energy levels, if we're thinking about the Bohr model with the solar system model with the nucleus in the center and the and the electrons traveling around in orbits, then each orbit is an energy level. And so um the number of energy levels is going to equal the, uh, the number period that you're in. So here's some examples of period elements uh, that have the same number of energy levels at, in their atoms. So you could see here that they all have uh, uh, these two on top. They both have two energy levels, right? These two orbits, each orbit is an energy level. So these two elements have two energy levels. And then these two on the bottom have three energy levels. So these two elements, whichever elements they are, we know that they are in period two because they have two energy levels. The two on the bottom, we know that they have to be in period three, whichever elements they are, because they have three energy levels. So in what period do you think these atoms are? We just said two, period two. And the ones on the bottom are going to be in period three. Okay, so the other thing you need to know is that the columns, these up and down columns, are we don't call them columns, we call them groups or families. And the reason we call them groups or families is because they have similar characteristics. So just like members of your own family have similar characteristics right maybe the 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 you know the children the family have certain physical characteristics maybe they have you know their father's eyes or maybe they have the mother's hair or colored or whatever the case may be um, so we share certain characteristics when you're in a family so because the elements in a group 
or in a column, they share the same kinds of characteristics. We call them families or groups. So each column of, of elements is, is considered a group or family in the periodic table. So they go from the top to the bottom or the bottom to the top. So this first one would be group one. This is, has a special name called the alkali metals. And then you have group two next to it. Those are the alkaline earth metals. And then we have these groups throughout the table. Now these groups starting with three, this gets into what are called the transition elements. This is that D block area that we were talking about. They're also called transition elements. So we can go through these 10 elements at a time. So that's the transition elements. And then we got 13. 13 is also called 3A. So on the top, you can see the numbers of the groups or families numbered 1 through 18. But we can also call groups 1, 2, 13, 14, 15. We can number those 1A, 2A, 3A, and so on. And so you've got group 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. So how many groups or families there are? There are 18 groups uh, in the periodic table. <clears throat> So what are the properties of these families or groups? So there's 18 groups. They're numbered from left to right. And the atomic number and masses increase as you go down the group, right? So going down the group, the atoms get bigger. So from the top downward, atomic mass is getting bigger. Atomic numbers are getting bigger. Atoms in the same group have the same number of valence electrons. So we I've, we said this before that if you're in group one, especially 1A, if we're talking about the A groupings, so if we go back and look at the periodic table here, so groups 3 through 12 in this table are called the transition elements. We can ignore those as far as, tra uh, as, far as uh, valence electrons go. So we can label the other ones starting from left to right. We could say, uh, this group one is also called 1A, and this group two is also called 2A, but then we can skip over these middle ones and jump over to 13, and we can call that 3A, and then 14 is 4A, 15 is 5A, and so on. And so those groups, those numbers match with the number of valence electrons in your group. So if you're in group 1A, you've got one valence electron. If you're in group 3A, you have three valence electrons. If you're in 5A, you've got five valence electrons. 6A, you've got six valence electrons, and so on. So there are exceptions. We talked about uh, with the D block and F block. So the group numbers there don't match the valence electrons. The valence electrons are by and large only two. So if you have a transition element or an element in that D and F block, uh, you're likely to only have one or two valence electrons. So groups of elements, elements in the same group have similar physical and chemical properties because they all have the same valence electrons. So remember, why do elements react the way they do? It goes back to the valence electrons. So the number of valence electrons your atom has dictates the kinds of properties it's going to have. So if your elements have the same valence electrons, then they're going to have the same properties. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this was a learning experience. If you like my videos, please smash that like button. Uh, subscribe to my channel. Hit that notification bell so you can be notified by other videos I put out and put comments in the comment section. Let me know what you think, if you have any questions. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day.